Happy Friday, everybody. I hope you've had a good first week at home and you've managed to get onto the website and done lots of the activities there. We've got loads more going up over the weekend, so there'll be lots and lots for you to do next week, including videos from various members of staff. We've got teachers reading your stories. We've got uh, Miss Cloton going on a virtual trip around the country in her camper van. Uh, we've got all sorts of bits and pieces that will be coming up for you next week. And what I'd love you to do for us is to send us uh, some photos of your learning space at home. Because what I want to do is I want to put onto our website a gallery of photos of things that you've done at home and each week we'll have a different theme. And this week I want you to show us where you're learning. Okay, so send me a photo, uh, send the school a photo of your learning space and we'll stick it onto the gallery. As it's Friday, normally we would do a celebration assembly. But in the absence of a celebration assembly, I thought we'd carry on with some reading assembly. Uh, uh, so here we go. The next chapter, if I can just find the page, is called The Queen's Croquet Ground. And what I'll do is I'll try and show you some of the pictures as well. But it's quite difficult because uh, I'm using my phone, so I'm not sure if it, if it definitely uh, goes onto the screen there for you. But we'll see how we go. The Cro Queen's Croquet Ground. A large rose tree stood near the entrance to the garden. The roses growing in it were white, but there were three gardeners at it, busily painting them red. Alice thought this a very curious thing, and she went nearer to watch them. And just as she came up to them, she heard one of them say, Oh, look out now, Five. Don't go splashing paint over me like that. <laughs> I couldn't help it, said Five in a sulky voice. Seven jogged my elbow. On which Seven looked up and said, Oh, that's right, Five. Always lay the blame on others. Oh, you'd better not talk, said Five. I heard the Queen say only yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. What for? said the one who had spoken first. That's none of your business, too, said Seven. Yes, it is his business, said Five, and I'll tell him it's for bringing the cook's tulip roots instead of onions. Seven flung down his brush and had just begun, well, of all the unjust thing, when his eyes chanced to fall upon Alice, as she stood watching them, and he checked himself suddenly. The others looked around also, and all of them bowed low. Would you tell me, said Alice, a little timidly, why are you painting those roses? Five and seven said nothing, but looked at two. Two began in a low voice, well, the fact is, you see, miss, this here ought to have been a red rose tree, and we put a white one in by mistake, and if the Queen was to find out, we we should all have our heads chopped off, you know? So, you see, miss, we're doing our best before she comes to... At this moment, Five, who had been anxiously looking across the garden, called out, The Queen! The Queen! and the three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat on their faces. There was the sound of many footsteps, and Alice looked round, eager to see the Queen. First came ten soldiers carrying clubs. These were all shaped like the three gardeners, oblong and flat, with their hands and feet at the corners. Next, the ten courtiers. These were ornamented all over with diamonds, and walked two and two, as the soldiers did. After these came the royal children. There were ten of them, and the little deers came jumping merrily along, hand in hand, in couples. They were all ornamented with hearts. Next came the guests, mostly kings and queens, and among them Alice recognised the white rabbit. It was talking in a hurried, nervous manner, smiling at everything that was said, and, and went by without noticing her. Then followed the knave of hearts, carrying the king's crown, on a crimson velvet cushion. And last of all, in this grand procession, came the King and Queen of Hearts. There's a picture of them there, I think. Alice was rather doubtful whether she ought to not lie down on her face like these gardeners were, but she could not remember ever having heard of such a rule in processions. And besides, what would be the use of a procession, she thought, if people had to lie down upon their faces so that they couldn't see it? So she stood still where she was, and she waited. When the procession came opposite to Alice, they all stopped and looked at her, and the Queen said severely, 
Who is this? She said it to the knave of hearts, who only bowed and smiled in reply. Idiot, said the queen, tossing her head impatiently and turning on Alice. She went on. What's your name, child? My name is Alice, so please, your majesty, said Alice very politely. <clears throat> but she added to herself, why, they're only a pack of cards after all. I needn't be afraid of them. And who are these? said the queen, pointing to the three gardeners who were lying round the rose tree. For what you see, as they were lying on their faces, the pattern on their backs was the same as the rest of the pack. She could not tell whether they were gardeners or soldiers or courtiers or, or three of her own children. How should I know? said Alice, surprised at her own courage. It's no business of mine. The queen turned crimson with fury and after glaring at her for a moment like a wild beast, screamed, Off with her head! Off with nonsense! said Alice, very loudly and decidedly. And the queen was silent. The king laid his hand upon her arm and timidly said, uh, Consider, my dear, she is only a child. The queen turned angrily away from him and said to the knave, Turn them over! The knave did so, very carefully with one foot. Get up! said the queen in a shrill, loud voice. And the three gardeners instantly jumped up and began bowing to the king and the queen, the royal children and everyone else. Oh, leave off that! screamed the queen. You make me giddy. And then, turning to the rose tree, she went on, What have you been doing here? Uh, may, it, may, it, may it please your majesty, said two, in a very humble tone, going down on one knee as he spoke. Uh, we, we were trying to... I see, said the queen, who had meanwhile begun examining the roses. Off with their heads! And the procession moved on three of the soldiers remaining behind to execute the unfortunate gardeners who ran to Alice for protection. You shan't be beheaded, said Alice, as she put them in a large flower pot that, pot that stood nearby. The three soldiers wandered around for a minute or two, looking at them, and then quietly marched off after the others. Are their heads off? shouted the Queen. Uh, their heads are gone, if it please you, Your Majesty, the soldiers shouted in reply. Mm, that's right! shouted the queen. Couldn't you play croquet? The soldiers were silent and looked at Alice, as the question was evidently meant for her. Yes, shouted Alice. Come on then, roared the queen, and Alice joined the procession, wondering very much what would happen next. It's, it's a very fine day, said the timid voice at her side. She was walking by the white rabbit, who was peeping anxiously into her face. Very, said Alice. Where's the Duchess? Hush, hush, said the rabbit in a low, hurried tone. He looked anxiously over his shoulder as he spoke and, and then raised himself onto tiptoe, put his mouth close to her ear and whispered, She's under sentence of execution. For what? said Alice. Did you say, what a pity? the rabbit asked. No, I didn't, said Alice. I don't think it's at all a pity. I said, what for? She boxed the Queen's ears, the, baggit, the rabbit began. Alice gave a little scream of laughter. Oh, hush, the rabbit whispered in a frightened tone. The Queen will hear you. You see, she came rather late and, and the Queen said, Get to your places, shouted the Queen in, in a voice of thunder. And people began running into the, around in all directions, tumbling up against each other. However, they got settled down in a minute or two, and the game began. Alice thought she had never seen such a curious croquet ground in all her life. It was all ridges and furrows. The balls were live hedgehogs, the mallets live flamingos, and the soldiers had to double themselves up and stand on their hands and feet to make the arches. The chief difficulty, Alice found at first, was in managing her flamingo, she succeeded in getting its body tucked away comfortably enough under her arm with its legs hanging down, but generally, just as she had got its neck nicely straight out and was going to give the hedgehog a, a blow with its head, it would twist itself round and look up in her face with such a puzzled expression that she could not help bursting out laughing. And when she got its head down and was going to begin again, 
It was very provoking to find that the hedgehog had unrolled itself and was in the act of crawling away. Besides all this, there was generally a ridge or a furrow in, the, in whatever way she wanted to send the hedgehog, and as the doubled-up soldiers were always getting up and walking off to other parts of the ground, Alice soon found that she came to the conclusion that it was a very difficult game indeed. OK. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, spend some time doing things that aren't work and get yourself ready to go again next week because next week we shall uh, just keep getting better so that we try and become the best versions of ourselves in every way, shape or form. So hopefully uh, I'll see you all sooner rather than later and we'll put some more videos up uh, for you to, to, to enjoy and lots more learning for you to, to get on with next week. Okay, have a great weekend.